Hello. This is a video on similarity, the Pythagorean theorem, and area. I'm over here at our Math 402 website, and I'm going to go to the textbook, and I'm going to go to section 1.7 on the Pythagorean theorem. It's under the basics chapter. 1.7. Here we are at section 1.7. The Pythagorean theorem has to do with a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem states that for right triangles, the legs are length A and B, and the hypotenuse is length C. Our conclusion is that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's important to locate your hypotenuse. It is the longest side and is also opposite the right angle. The two shorter sides that make up the right angle are the legs. We're going to be worrying about the proof next week, so we'll skip over that. We also have the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, which is also true. If we have a situation where we have three lengths in a triangle, such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then we can conclude the triangle is a right triangle. Also in this section, we do have the distance formula, the distance from point x1, y1 to x2, y2, d here. And in order to derive this formula, we use a right triangle here. This leg is x2 minus x1. This leg is y2 minus y1. And here is the Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And then if you take the square root of both sides, you get the distance formula. We're going to probably be doing this just from the graph and using a right triangle. Now I'd like to go back to section 1.6. So I'm going to come here to chapter 1 and go to the section on area and perimeter. The main thing we're going to be focusing on here is area of a triangle. An area of a triangle is one half base times height. The base is a particular side of the triangle. It doesn't have to be at the bottom of the triangle. It can be any particular side. The height is a perpendicular distance from the line containing your base to the third point. In this particular case, the height is outside the triangle, and I'm glad they chose that example. Sometimes the height is in the interior of the triangle. Sometimes the height is in the exterior of the triangle. This is a very powerful formula, and we need to become fluent with that. And here it is again base times height over 2, or 1 half base times height. Now what I'd like to do is go over to chapter 6, which is on similarity. We've already worked with dilations in this course. Now I'd like to go to section 6.2. This is the important sentence right here. Similar triangles will have corresponding angles that are the same measure and corresponding sides are proportional. The angles are congruent. The sides are proportional. These two rectangles here are similar. At least they're asking the question if they are. not Let's see here. This side HE is 2. This side AD is Four, so it looks like we have a scale factor of two if they are similar. Fe here is four, and this side is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two times four is eight. 
So these are proportional. The rectangles are similar. I would like to look at this example here. The two triangles below are similar. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. What is the measure of angle A? And find the length DE. Okay, let's take a look here. The order of the letters is important. Angle A corresponds to angle D, which means the measure of angle A needs to be 37 degrees. So we can write that answer right away. Measure of angle A is equal to 37 degrees. The second letter is B. That corresponds to the second letter, which is E. And the third letter, C, corresponds to angle F. Now, let's set up a proportion. A proportion is a fraction equal to a fraction. And this first proportion that I'm going to be setting up is going to be called a within proportion. So in each fraction, I'm going to stay within the triangle. So in the smaller triangle, I'm going to put 3 over 2. And in the larger triangle, in the numerator, I need to put the segment that corresponds to the 3. AB corresponds to DE, so I'll put DE on the top. And BC corresponds to EF, and EF is 6. And now I can uh, cross multiply, or I can use factor of change. In this case, factor of change works. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9, so DE equals 9. Next thing I'd like to do is go to the AA similarity. As we saw, if two triangles are similar, it means that all the corresponding angle pairs are congruent and all the corresponding sides are proportional. However, we have a shortcut. In order to be sure that two triangles are similar, you do not necessarily need to have all that information. We can use the AA criterion, which is the angle-angle criterion, which states, the AA criterion for a triangle similarity states that if two triangles have two pair of congruent angles, then the triangles are similar. This is a very easy to use property. Of course, if two of the angles are congruent to two of the angles, the third angle will be congruent because they both add up to 180. AAA would be redundant. Okay, I would like to give you just a little bit more theory. So I'd like you to take out the week nine note-taking sheet. And we need to talk about two triangles that are called the special triangles. The 30, 60, 90 degree triangle and also the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. These triangles are very pervasive and show up in many problem-solving situations. It is also very useful because we're learning about proportional reasoning. So let's take a look at our first triangle ABC. This is an equilateral triangle, so the three angles are 60 degrees each. If I drop a perpendicular from C, I form two congruent triangles. So I have an altitude down the middle forming two congruent triangles. And now I'm going to just look at one of them. I'm going to look at triangle BCD. And this is a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. One of the things you want to do when you're working with these triangles is to visualize what's going on. We have a large acute angle, which is 60, 
and we have a small pointy angle, which is 30. You want to identify those. Opposite the small angle will be the small leg, and opposite the 60 degree angle will be the large leg. You want to keep these straight. Now, for the sake of discussion, let's say that all the sides of the equilateral triangle are 2x, which means our hypotenuse over here, BC, is 2x. Now, what is the length of BD? Yes, the length of BD is x. Now, if we apply the Pythagorean theorem to find CD, we get the following equation. x squared plus CD squared equals 2x quantity squared. If you can pause the video and be one step ahead of the professor, that's always a great thing. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Subtracting x squared from both sides, I get 3x squared on the right side. And now I'm going to take square root. So CD is equal to the square root of 3x squared. And then if I take the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared, the square root of 3 doesn't simplify, but the square root of x squared is x. So that gives me my answer. CD is equal to x times the square root of 3. This relationship is very important. To go from the hypotenuse to the short leg, you divide by 2. To go from the short leg to the long leg, you multiply by root 3. Now I'd like to get a different color and go the other direction. Let's say we started with the long leg. Let's maybe call it L for long leg in purple. The reverse, what would the reverse process be of multiplying by root 3? The reverse process of multiplying by root 3 is dividing by root 3. So the short leg now is L divided by root 3. Then to get from the short leg to the hypotenuse, we double. And so we get 2L divided by root 3. We need to be able to go from any side to the other sides. This is a useful thing to be able to do to reverse a process in mathematics. Now I would like to move down to the 45, 45, 90 triangle. In this particular case, it is an isosceles right triangle. The three angles add to 180. One of them is 90 which leaves 90 degrees divided by 2 is 45. In this case, we have x and x. So I have x squared plus x squared equals ts squared, which means 2x squared equals ts squared. And then if I square, take the square root of both sides, I get x times the square root of 2. What this means is to go from a, a leg of a 45, 45, 90 triangle to the hypotenuse, you multiply by root 2. And you might think about what that means numerically. The square root of 2, you can check it on a calculator, is about 1.4. So the hypotenuse is about 1.4, a little less than 1.5 times as long as a leg. Similarly, we need to be able to go in the reverse direction. Let's say our hypotenuse was h. What would the leg be? The leg would be h divided by root 2 because the inverse process of multiplying by root 2 is dividing by root 2. Once again, in mathematics, we need to be able to do things forwards and backwards. OK, I think this is enough theory. Now let's get into some examples. So let's take out our example sheet. So our first example, we have a right triangle with one leg of six, one leg of eight, and the hypotenuse is unknown. 
Now, you have to be careful that you take a look at your given information and don't assume something that isn't true. This one might look like it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but it does not say that it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so therefore you cannot assume that. In fact, you might ask yourself if it is or is not. So as usual, if you can be one step ahead of the professor on the Pythagorean theorem, I encourage you to do that. So let's plug into the Pythagorean theorem to find x. When writing down the Pythagorean theorem, it's very important that the letter that's by itself squared is the hypotenuse. The most common mistake here is to randomly put the numbers in. So 6 squared plus 8 squared equals x squared. x squared equals 100. And that means when we take the square root of both sides, this one's going to come out even and we get 10. Not all problems come out even, but it's kind of nice when the first one does. This is a multiple of everybody's favorite Pythagorean triple, the three, four, five. Now let's go to example two. This time, our unknown side happens to be a leg. Leg squared, plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Square root of two times square root of two is two. So we have two plus x squared equals 25. x squared equals 23. So x equals the square root of 23. Okay. We're going to find the distance between two points in the coordinate plane next. And we're gonna kind of do this the old fashioned way with the Pythagorean theorem. First of all, I like to do it that way because I don't like to memorize formulas. I like to do things using first principles. And second of all, the Common Core State Standard 8G8 says that students are supposed to apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points in the coordinate system. So let's graph our points. Three negative one means we come to the right three and down one. This is my first point and six four is going to be six to the right and up four. and we want to find this distance. Well, now we need to draw in the right triangle. It can either be above or below, doesn't matter. And we can calculate our legs. This leg is three. The other leg is five. So we have three squared plus five squared equals the distance squared. That's 25 plus 9 equals the distance squared. And so the distance is the square root of 34. I'll let you write out the steps. The square root of 34. Now let's take a look at example 4. Given an isosceles right triangle, isosceles means two sides are the same length, right triangle means there's a right angle. So AB is 19, so AC equals 19. AC equals 19. And then as we saw in the isosceles right triangle, to get from a leg to the hypotenuse, we multiply by root two. Now, if you get in a pinch and can't remember the rule, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem and simplify. But since the 45, 45, 90 triangle comes up so often, it's useful to have this shortcut. In example five, we again have an isosceles right triangle. We're supposed to find the legs. Yes, it's going to be 17 divided by root two. 17 divided by root two. Now, 
that may be sufficient to leave the answer that way. It may be sufficient to run it into a calculator. Or if we multiply by root two over root two, this rationalizes the denominator. We get 17 root two over two. Rationalizing the denominator means making the denominator rational. And sometimes this is a more useful form. In this particular case, I don't think that it is. Now let's look at example six. We have angle H here is 30 degrees. We do have a right angle, which means angle I is 60 degrees. You need to visualize and see which is your short leg, which is your long leg, and which is your hypotenuse. It isn't necessarily the one on the left or the right or anything like that, but you need to visualize what's what. To go from hypotenuse to short leg, you take it and divide by two. The short leg is kind of the go-between. And then multiply by root three to get your long leg. Once again, we could use the Pythagorean theorem, but the shortcut is useful. Now I'm ready to go to example seven. We have a right triangle. We have a 30 degree angle, which means I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is one of our special triangles. Now, one of the reasons I chose this example is for a right triangle, the area is one half base times height. But if you have a right triangle, you have kind of a shortcut because the two legs are perpendicular to one another. So one can be treated as the base and the other one treated as the height. So my long leg here is seven times the square root of three. Seven times the square root of three. So now I can do area equals one half base times height. One half times seven times seven root three. Notice the base is not necessarily at the bottom of the figure. And so we have 49 root three over two. On this one, I'm in the mood to put it into a decimal form. So I'm using the squiggly equal sign, which means approximately equal to, and I think I'll round off to three decimal places, 42.435. 42 and 435 thousandths is the rounded off form. Now let's find the area on example eight. The hypotenuse is given as five root three. Now we need to get the legs. The legs are each five, and these can be used for the base and height. So we have one half base times height, which is 25 halves or 12 and one half. Now this week, we're just going to be doing exercises. We won't have any units, but uh, for most problems, we should have units and distances, but that's not our focus this week. Now let's take a look at example nine. Okay, this is going to be an example of similar triangles. I have two parallel lines here. Let's go ahead and label some of these other points so that we can talk about them here. Segment DE is parallel to segment BC. We also have some distances there. And so what this means is this angle is a corresponding angle to this angle. So those are congruent. If I take a look at the small triangle, I have triangle ABC. And if you look at the big triangle AED, this angle here at A is actually in both triangles. It's congruent to itself by the reflexive property of congruence. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle AED. 
Now we're going to be setting up our proportion. And I think I'm going to do this two ways with a within proportion and a between proportion. So with the within proportion, I'm going to be staying inside the triangle. So in the small triangle, ABC, I have three over AB. In the large triangle, I have eight over 10. which means 8AB equals 30, AB is equal to 30 over 8, and, and we could simplify that if we wanted to. Now let's take a look at the between proportion. In the between proportion, I'm going to put the corresponding sides from two different triangles in the same fraction. So I can do 3 over 8, which are the corresponding sides. And on the other side, I would have AB over 10. If you're going to go from small triangle to big triangle on the left side of the equal sign, you need to go from small triangle to big triangle on the right-hand side. Once again, if we cross multiply, we get 8. AB equals 30. And again, a, B is, of course, the same answer, 30 over 8. When you're working with your students, you might decide if you have a preference for within proportions or between proportions. I think you should give students um, options. However, there might be one that's preferred. Now we're ready to look at example 10. This has a potential for a common mistake. When we're working with similar triangles and setting up our proportions, the items in the proportion, the numbers in the proportion needs to be lengths of sides of triangles. Five is not the length of a side of a triangle, so five should not be put into the proportion. You need to calculate the length of the side of the triangle. And the length of the side of this triangle is eight. So now we're ready to set up the proportion. X over three equals seven over eight. If I cross multiply, I get eight X equals 21. So X is equal to 21 eighths. It might be tempting to do the Pythagorean theorem on this, um, and the Pythagorean theorem would be valid on this problem, and we could even uh, figure out um, all the unknown distances here. However, the question was to find x, so I think I'm going to stop there. Our final example has to do with a right triangle with an altitude drop to the hypotenuse and we're supposed to find the area. So you might take a look at this and see if you can think of a strategy for finding the area. Pause the video as necessary. One of the things that's very interesting here about this particular figure is that we have a large right triangle. We have a small right triangle on the right-hand side and a medium right triangle on the left-hand side. And all three of these triangles are similar. They all have a right angle and they all share um, a angle with the large triangle. So the large triangle, I'll call it WYZ, is similar to the left-hand medium-sized triangle. Now let's see if we can get the letters in the correct order. Angle W does correspond to angle W, so W needs to be our first letter. The third letter of the large triangle was Z, which is the right angle, which means the third letter of this left-hand triangle needs to be X, which is our right angle. 
and then the middle letter would be Z because in the left-hand triangle, Z is the large acute angle. Now let's get the large triangle similar to the right-hand triangle. Triangle W, Y, Z, and see if you can write the corresponding letters for this small triangle on the right. Well, the angle Y is going to correspond to angle Y, so we need Y in the middle position. Angle Z is the right triangle, right angle on the left, and angle X is the right angle on the right, which leaves Z as our first letter over here. In the small right hand triangle, it's the small acute angle, and angle W is the small acute angle in the big triangle. You're going to have to look at that for a while and have that make sense. Let's go ahead and summarize now by the transitive property how the two smaller triangles are similar to one another. Triangle WZX is similar to triangle ZYX. Now, I can set up a proportion to find WX. So in the small triangle on the right-hand side, if I do short leg to long leg, I get two force. And now in the left-hand triangle, if I do short leg to long leg, it would be four to WX. Interesting that the side of four is the long leg in the right-hand triangle, and it's the short leg in the left-hand triangle. If I cross multiply, I get 2WX equals 16. So that means that WX is equal to eight. This is eight. And so now I do have enough information to do one half base times height. Area is equal to one half base times height. The base is 10, the height is four, half of 10 is five, so my area is 20. Um, notice here that when we take one half base times height, we're not doing distributive property. We have three things multiplied together, one half, 10, and four. If you'd like to multiply the 10 times four first and get 40, that's correct and legal by the associative property and take half of that. Or you can take one half times four and get two and then multiply times 10. You can multiply them in any order because multiplication of three objects is associative and commutative. I hope this video has been helpful. Have a great day.